been. Dr. Brent, please open us up in prayer. Father, we just thank you for everything that's taken place thus far, Lord. We just acknowledge you as Lord of all lords, King of all kings. God, there is none greater than you. Your word lets us know that uh, heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool, God, and that there is nothing too hard for you. And so, Father, we just commit this time of Bible study into your very capable hands, God. We pray that your blessings would continue to be upon the relevant word church, God, and its leadership, Lord. We pray for everyone that is present here tonight, Lord, that you would meet every need. And God, we pray that even as this new um, Bible study topic of grief is, is taught, God, we pray that it would be a transforming um, that takes place in the lives of your people, God. May there be healing. May there be deliverance, God. May there be breakthrough, Lord. We just pray for a refreshing God and an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, God. Anoint Dr. Claire as she speaks tonight, Lord. God, we pray that our hearts would be good ground, and we pray that you would be Lord in everything that is said, and that we would come away from this place knowing that you have met us here tonight, Lord. We say thank you in advance for what you're going to do, and we say we love you, we praise you, and we count this prayer done in Jesus' name. Amen. So do, we will dive into our lesson for tonight. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this evening, and we just thank you all for tuning in. It is always a blessing to come before you to teach a small group, huge growth Bible study lesson, and I look forward to what we will learn tonight, sharpening each other with the Word of God. This is the first lesson of our newest series, Grief from a loss, and the title is Hopelessness. Hopelessness. The devotional opens by telling us the thoughts and feelings of a mother who recently lost a child. We have heard the song, Walk a Mile in My Shoes, and we realize that we cannot even begin to understand what it must feel like to lose a child unless we've lost one ourselves. All the pain from the loss of a loved one is different, but there is one thing that we all experience and that is grief. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross described in her very now famous book from 1969 called On Death and Dying, she described five stages of grief and listed them as denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So tonight we're going to discuss these five stages. And I'm going to ask you, who tonight can describe what you think may go on in each of these stages, starting with denial? Do we have any comments on what you think might happen in this stage of grief? the denial stage. What might you feel when you hear that a loved one has passed and you enter the phase of denial? What do you feel? Do we have any comments? Um, I'm trying to find the right words. When, let's say they come to you and they tell you your child been shot and you knew that you just left him in his room or, or, or he should not have been in, he should be home. Mm -hmm. And then you go and you say, no, that's not him. It's not, how, it's not my child. It's got to be somebody else's child. So you, you, just, you just block it out and you, you, you will not accept it until you see it. Mm -hmm. So that's one form of denial, acceptance yes. unless you see it. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Sister Joy. Anybody else? Denial. As far as with my niece, when she passed, she was mm -hmm. like my, my child. Mm -hmm. um, and it happened suddenly. I went to the emergency room. It was more like a disbelief. Mm -hmm. It's a numbness that you feel. Yes. yes. Uh, it can't be. Mm -hmm. I can't believe. No, I can't believe this. And you're looking at her. And you know she's gone. You know she's not going to come back. But it's this feeling that you have. Mm hmm that emptiness. Amen. That's what I felt. 
And that's, and all of those are exactly right. The description is a feeling of numbness and it's common in the early days of bereavement. And as a result, a lot of people carry on as if nothing has happened. They just go on like, they just deny it. It's like, no, this has not taken place. And then Dr. Ross goes into anger. This is a common feeling that comes next. Who can describe the anger and, and tell me what happens during that stage. Some of the things that may take place when the anger begins to set in. Do we have any comments? I think, I think that when anger sets in, um, it's because you're trying to process um, what's going on. Maybe you're questioning God. So the anger and the frustration comes in because then you say, well, why me? You know what I mean? Why me? Why is this happening to me? Why my child? Why my sister? Why my? So it becomes a situation where you're personalizing the individual that has gone on. Mm -hmm. And because you're personalizing it, you're upset now because you feel as if you've been robbed of something. So if something, if someone naturally takes something from you, you're going to be angry. That's a natural thing. And that's a human thing. And that's also a biological thing. It is. You um, I think that Christianity helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a biological thing. It's literally real. It literally happens in your brain. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, religion and, and God and other aspects can help you come out of that anger. But it's, it's literally biologically something that happens. It literally just happens. You are absolutely correct. The, the, the definition says it is completely natural emotion because death is often seen as cruel and unfair, especially when the person is thought of as dying before their time. Some people are angry at the person for dying or even angry at themselves for not doing things that they wanted to do with that person before they die. And this is often felt by those, like you said, who do not have a strong spiritual relationship with God or a thorough understanding of his word. Thank you all so much. The next phase is bargaining. Who can tell me what may happen in the bargaining phase of grief? You say, you ask the Lord, why, why didn't you take me instead? You know, why didn't you take me? Why him? You know, I don't mind. You should have took me instead of yeah. him. Yes, exactly. We yeah. start to make deals. Anybody else? Yeah. Know? It's saying like uh, you're willing to do almost anything to yes. minimize the, <clears throat> the loss or the pain. Yes. And um, yes. it's like saying, I'll, I'll never get angry again if you can stop him or her from dying or leaving me. And, you know, when bargaining starts to take place, um, we are often directing our requests to a higher power or something bigger than we are that maybe it'll influence a different outcome. Amen. Amen. The definition, you are absolutely right. It says we start to make deals with ourselves or even perhaps with God. We begin to feel like we could do something to perhaps undo what has happened. Or we start to say stuff like, what if I do this? Or what if I do that? Can I make the pain go away? Or can I bring my loved one back? Amen. And then the fourth stage that Dr. Ross talked about is depression. Tell mm -hmm. me what you think may happen when depression starts to set in. You shut yourself off from everyone. You go into this hiding place and you don't never want to be bothered. You don't want, you know, you don't want no one to talk to you. You don't want to eat. You don't, you just, you just shut yourself away from everything and everyone. Amen. Amen. In this stage, this is the stage when sadness and longing starts to settle in. And this involves very intense pain that can, that can come in waves that can last for months or even years. Hmm. Life may feel like it no longer holds any meaning, or it can be a very, very scary time. And finally, acceptance. Tell mm -hmm. me what happens when we reach the acceptance phase of grief. Hey, Pastor, this is um, Pastor Clear here. Um, for me, uh, acceptance 
is with knowing the love of God. Um, I can speak from, you know, personal experience, you know, loss and transition of uh, our youngest brother, our brother, Willie Davis, um, man's and woman's best friend, which are our loving dogs. And then most recently, our family, our matriarch. And, you know, brothers and sisters, even though I was well with their transitioning, it was a part of not seeing their physical presence anymore. Um, after talking to my mom, Joy, Mother Joy is right here, who was in the hospital, and she said, she's gone. I was, I was walking actually in my yard. I was, you know, I was actually grilling and I was like, okay, I got it, I understood. And I fell to my knees and then I cried out uncontrollably because for me, I said to myself, mommy gone. And for us Caribbean folks, Creole, is that she's gone. And all I could do, I started singing loudly as I walked back to the back side of our house on the deck and I met my son and my wife. And, uh, you know, I know we'll talk more with that, you know, with mom, because this was the second time I heard that same statement. First, it was, he is gone, which was our, our youngest brother. And now this was our matriarch. And I'll tell you the beauty of gospel music. And I'm talking about sanctified. I'm talking about that touches your spirit, amen. There's a group out there called uh, Elevation Worship in Maverick City, and they're on YouTube. Younger generation, and what's touched me is, you know, all the different race, color, creed, but they sing this song called Wait On You. And I found so much solace and cried and cried, and I let it all out. And I praise knowing that mommy was welcome into God's arms, because, see, I know that I know Matthew 25, 21 tells me that the Lord said unto him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And him saying, well done. So for me, the acceptance, and I, I, I know my mom could testify to that when I told her about my brother, it is well with my soul. And as I've walked this walk as a, as a minister of the gospel, it is well, knowing that that same echoing by the father of job well done. Come on in, Miss Barry Keep. That was that's what we used to call her. But Saints, I'll tell you, um, when you get to that point of acceptance, it's like that uh, portrait that people always see called footprints, knowing that when that single step was there, that was God carrying you along. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Anybody else? Yes. Um when we um, reach acceptance, it's, it's not that we no longer feel the pain of the loss. Um, however, we are, we are no longer re resisting the reality of the situation Amen. and we're not struggling to make it something different. Amen. You know, sadness and regret can still be present in this phase, but the emotional survival tactics of denial, bargaining, and anger are less likely to be present. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. And, and the official textbook says that this is when the pain of grief eases, when we accept what has happened. People may never get over the death, but they learn to live again while keeping the memories of those lost close. So thank you all for your comments. The devotional says regarding this mother, she says, moments after you suffer the loss of your baby or any loved one for that matter, hopelessness begins to creep into your heart. Even though the room is filled with people, you feel alone. Everyone is sad, but no one understands the depth of your sadness. We want so badly to describe to others the pain we feel when they ask how you are doing. And she says, the only words that seem to flow out or are, I'm okay, or I'm trying to stay strong, but deep within your heart is shattered. You are in a deep state of confusion, and you wonder if you can truly live with this new reality. You are wounded, and comfort and healing are, they seem like they're a long, long way off. But church, it is in times like these that we must remember what it says in Psalms 30 and 5. It says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And even in our most distraught times, we are to continue to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Remember, all of our help comes from the Lord. 
It is especially in times like these that we have to have faith that he is carrying us and not we ourselves. It is in these times that we have to sow the word of God into our hearts and spew them out of our mouths. Church, we must call out Psalms 55, 22 that says, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. The devotional continues by saying, I want you to understand these feelings are normal. She says that <clears throat> healing will not come overnight. You must allow yourself to grieve, but you must also trust the hope that is given in the scripture for today. And the scripture for today comes from Psalms 147 and 3 that says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So this verse reminds us that the Lord heals the broken hearts. Class, just as sure as these hearts love, they will also be broken. Someone will disappoint you. They will hurt you. They may even transition to the Father, and that will hurt your heart. But the word of God says he binds our wounds. Job 14 and 1 says that man who is born of a woman is the days are short and full of trouble. And TRW, we cannot escape the trials and the tribulations of this world, but we can trust God to never leave us nor forsake us. The writer says, I believe that the Lord began healing our broken heart the moment our baby ascended to heaven. She says that she knows and understands. She says that God knows and understands just how painful death can be, especially how emotional it makes us. She says that God knows and understands class. Jesus came and was fully man and God. Remember what it says in John eleven thirty five. 35. It says that Jesus wept. This scripture says that he groaned in himself and he saw the pain of the people who grieved the death of Lazarus. The devotional says, tonight I want you to focus on two words. He heals. He heals. Who, can I, who tonight can testify that God heals the brokenhearted? Do we have any comments? God heals the brokenhearted. Who can testify that God still heals the brokenhearted? I can testify that God heals the brokenhearted because when you're going through your um, emotions of losing a loved one, he'll send you small signs. Mm -hmm. And I think in those signs, there's healing. Um, and those signs are a reminder. Like, it can be the simplest thing. When my ex-boyfriend was shot and killed, it, it will be like we always spent a lot of time driving in the car. And I'll be driving and like, a song will come on and I'll be like, that is, that's crazy. Or, or I'll see something that I specifically remember vividly. Like, oh, wait, th this brings back memories. And that right there is the, con it's the, it's the, it's the connection, I think, between the spiritual world, of course, and, you know, us here in the living. But it's also God kind of reminding you, like, yes, this person is no longer in the flesh. However, your experiences with them is not gone. And you can still utilize all that you learn from them and go forth and complete your mission because their mission has, they have gone on. They're, they're, they're not in the, and what people have to remember is, you know, once the spirit leaves the body, that's just flesh. So we have to dwell on the spirit of the individual and not the flesh and, and what they gave you, what they taught you and what you learned and everything that God had allowed them to do in your life for that time period. Amen. That's what you focus on. And then the reminders is the is the love it's the compassion it's the care it's God saying you know I know you feel bad but look remember this do you remember when this happened do you remember when y'all did this and I think that is it, those are key moments um in, in making sure that you're you're con you know you get the condolence that you need or that you might seek spiritually 
Amen. At least. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your testimony. Who, who else can, can testify that God heals the brokenhearted? Anybody? Well, I can. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I can testify to that. Uh, my father passed uh, some years ago. Um, I was, I felt guilty about our last conversation because I was uh, agitated because I had to keep repeating myself um, because he was hard of hearing. And I had planned for us that summer to go see a friend of mine who was an audiologist. Well, um, at when he passed, I felt so guilty for not, you know, being agitated with him because he couldn't hear. But as I continued to pray and I grew in my walk with God, I was able to, he helped me, he helped me to forgive myself for that and to just heal from his passing and realizing that, you know, my dad was not mad at me um, for our last conversation, but he was at peace. And so I could be at peace. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for your testimony. Anybody else? Uh, Pastor Clear here. Um, I can testify that in all our griefs, we should all still look to Jesus. Um, the word of God in um, Hebrews 12, 2 says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the Father. He is the author, and we must stand upon him and turn all our troubles and worries onto Jesus. Feast, 1 Peter 5, 6, 7 reminds us that we humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time, and that we're supposed to cast all our cares upon him. For, listen to the saints, he careth for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I, like many of you, have been through many trials and tribulations in my life that have broken my heart, but God heals. And the times when I, I thought that I would not make it through, he healed me. He brought me through. And, and things in this life will seem to break you. They will seem like they will crush you to the core. But we have a God who sits high and looks low. And we have to remember what scripture says in Matthew 6 and 26. It says, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet our heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? TRW, God's eye is on the sparrow, so we can rest assured that he is watching over us too. Amen. So thank you all for your comments. Our devotional goes on to say and remind us of Job 518, which says, for he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. So the writer wants us to know that when the tears fill our eyes and all of the unanswered questions pierce your heart, hold on to the hope that he heals. Even now, though you don't feel it, the Lord is working on your behalf. So in closing, she offers us this practical tip. She says, purchase a journal and begin to write out what you're thinking and feeling emotionally. And once you're done, write out a scripture or a verse and ask God to allow his truth to work in your heart. She says, when you are grieving, it's hard to explain to others what you're feeling. But when you put pen to paper, you can express yourself however you like. And also, you can reflect back on your journal as you progress and as you heal. She says that journaling changed her life and allowed her to see the progress of the Lord, truly binding up her wounds and healing her heart. Class, I want you to remember tonight that as you grieve, know that God heals. He binds the wounds of the brokenhearted. We have all dealt with or are currently dealing with the loss of a loved one. But we can have faith tonight that God is at work in our lives right now. 
He is healing us. He will see us through our pain and he will help us through our sorrow. Do we have any comments before we close out our session tonight? Pastor, this is um, Reverend Claire. Just want to thank you for, uh, we, well, we got to thank the Lord for just this series. Um, it is just at the right time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? I just wanted to um, add to that. There's an actual scripture in the Bible that states, blessed are those who mourn. Um, it's along the lines of that. Um, or, you know, wait, I want to make sure I get it right. You know, it's okay. I, I won't do all that. But <laughs> it's pretty much saying blessed are those that who mourn. mourn or God will bless those that mourn. And I think that one thing as Christians we have to remember is that God didn't leave us in this walk alone. He Amen. left us with rules, regulations, um, you know, answers to our questions. And it's in the Bible. And if he included that piece in the Bible, mm -hmm. it's a reminder to us that you will mourn. Mm -hmm. And you will be blessed if you put God first. And if you endure the pain, the suffering, you will be blessed. Yeah. And um, he does not not see you and he does not not see your pain. So I think those moments where you get those scriptures in the Bible that speak to what you're going through, it's a blessing. Yes, and it's yes. a way that God reiterates his strength in your life where he reiterates what what role he plays in your life, which is the almighty um, Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the end. And Amen. so that's all I wanted to say. Amen. Thank you so much, daughter. He says that blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Holly there you mother. go. That's Take it. Care. <laughs> and he will comfort us all. Anybody else before I close us out in prayer tonight? Well, thank you all for your participation in our class. And we pray that something was said to help you on your journey to healing. So let us all pray. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for this lesson that teaches us the importance of keeping our faith, hope, and trust in you. It is especially in times of grief when we may feel at our lowest, but you, you are at your strongest, comforting us. You are right by our sides, Lord God, being patient with us as we go through all these stages of grief. Some of us may be grieving right now, Lord, but we know that you are a healer and we pray for all of them. Thank you, Father, for this lesson tonight. And we pray that all has been said and done is acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Now may the grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has been given everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Praise the amen, Lord. We love amen, you. Amen, amen. Thank you for participating tonight. Amen. And we'll give you one last look. Oh, look, the sun is out outside my window. <laughs> I promise I'm only take him to the bunny slopes. Like diamonds, y'all. And he's going to take me to the bunny slopes. So praise the Lord. We love you. We'll see you next week for our next lesson in small group, huge growth, uh, grief from a loss. We love you. God bless you all. Be safe and have a great week. Blessings Good night and be safe. All God right. bless you. Thank you so much. Yep. Good night, Jeremiah. Good night, Mom in New York. Good night, Sister yeah. Tammy Edwards. Thank hey, you for Kayla. joining us. Yep. Good night. Good, Good night, children. All right. All right, sis. Night, Kayla. Tiffany, love right, you. And Sister Tammy, appreciate the you. The weather's perfect. Love you. Oh, it's Good raining night. tonight, girl. Raining, right. raining, raining. It's raining? Oh, no. Don't <laughs> worry. The sunshine.